The numbers are stark, the reality is grim. A record number of people are experiencing homelessness in and around Metro Vancouver, the largest measured uptick since 2005. This is the first point of count coming outside of the pandemic, and we know that there's been serious increase in communities around North America. Greater Vancouver's 2023 point-in-time homeless count identified a 32% increase in people experiencing homelessness compared to the previous count in 2020. The cities of Surrey, Vancouver and Burnaby saw the largest changes in the total number of people. And the number of youth, seniors and LGBTQ people who are unhoused has also increased. We sent our Leanne Young to find out why so many people are on the street and speak with an advocate for those help struggling to put a roof over their heads and try to find light in some truly hopeless situations. We're here in the city of Vancouver and that's where about half of the people who are homeless in this region stay every night. And based on the homeless count, that's more than 2,400 people a night. And organizers believe there are far more people than that. I'm about to meet up with Marcy Jacobs. She's a volunteer with the Aboriginal Front Door Society. And everyone around here knows her for helping people out with their subsidized housing applications. And they call her Mama Marcy. Marcy just sent me a, a selfie. I love this. We're going to go find her. Hi, Mama Marcy. Hi. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Hi, I'm Leanne. I've been coming out at 10 o'clock, midnight, and 5 o'clock in the morning. To try and get people to fill out housing applications? No, just talking to them, telling them that, you know, that it's getting cold soon. Right. Just a friendly reminder that we need to get our housing applications in. I have socks here for people. Yeah. And I hand out cigarettes uh, as they do their application. Here, socks? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Ooh. Thank you. How many applications do you tend to, you know, get filled out a day, you find? The least I do is five. The most I've ever done was 30. And then are they ending up in long-term housing or, or what kind of housing are you finding they're ending up in? Uh, sometimes it's just the SROs, but there's, some of them are happy to get, have a roof over their head. Yeah, yeah. It's the elders that I'm worried about right now. Like, the place we were renting, the owner sold the house. So since then we've been looking for housing, nothing, nothing. No phone calls. Where were you living? We we're living on Dumfries, uh, past uh, Victoria. How much were you paying for rent at your place in Dumfries? On Dumfries was 1400 for one bedroom suite. Okay, and, and that was just like a private landlord that you were seeing? Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. And now it's and you haven't been able to find something comparable? Nothing, nothing, yeah, you know, what I'm worried about is my husband. Because he's He has cancer, yeah. one kidney removed, and now he has to wear a tube. So I have to be there with him all the time. I'm just stressed out thinking this, thinking about that, and my husband take care of, you know. Uh, he's a dear, but what can we do? Thinking about groceries and stuff. Oh and that's my God. all the prices of that's going up too. And, and so Prime you know, Minister when, when... asked for big food markets not to raise the, the prices up. How about housing, rental housing? Where are the people going to cook their food? <laughs> It's funny, but it's not. Because I was going to ask you, when you hear politicians say, we're building, it'll be ready in three years. Yeah, in three what do you years, think? I said. I told my husband, maybe I should, should move back home where my father owns all the land, you know, in Canada, First Nations. Years ago, they gave all this land to First Nations, like for trap line and stuff like that. And where, where would... May, Yukon, maybe we'll move up there. Right. But your kids are here. Yeah, I know. I got a son and daughter, grandkids. Right. You know, they can't even help. There's no places to get rental, right? Yeah. Unbelievable. How if it wasn't for then? Marcy, I hope we get a place. Other than that, I'm just stressed out. What happened to your tent? The fucking the fucking um. City? City took it. Everything they took. Now we're starting all over again. They, they said that we could get, get housing, me and my daughter. I said, no, I am not taking no housing until my son gets something. Because why should he be outside and being nice and cozy inside? So they don't give him help. They don't even give him a chance to work. 
and they should at least give them two weeks to train if they Some they're good at yeah yeah. You had a home at one point. Yes, I did. When was this? This was a while ago. It was a year ago or something like that. Okay, and so how long no. have you been homeless now? For about just about a year. And so since the year that you've been, you know, without a hey, home. Hey, don't touch my stuff up there. Thank you. So in the year now you've been without a home. Yeah. Well, Where have you been go. staying? Here. This is my home. Um, Sometimes when it rains, I go in the shelter, try to make sure he's really cozy. And I don't really like, like to go in there. I don't care if it's raining. I will stay with him. Over the last two years, do you feel like the number of people who are... Do you feel like COVID changed things? Yes, How big so? time. How so? Things are not, everything is closed, still closed on people. Oh, a lot of things are still closed. Yeah, the yeah. ACE services aren't there. There's no services. My dream is that we have a parkade around the corner here. And my dream is that we have a cover for during the day this winter for people. Last year, they only had places for people at night. Nothing for during the day. And this winter, there's going to be more homeless. So needs to be yeah. more help. Yes, needs to be a lot of help. All right. Thank you, Mama Marcy. Thank for, you. For now, as you heard, more than 2,400 people experiencing homelessness were counted in Vancouver alone. This is the first count since the pandemic. Joining us for a broader look is our municipal affairs reporter, Justin McElroy. Justin, what exactly has changed in the last three years? Uh, things have gotten worse, Dan, uh, to put it bluntly. As you said, this was the first count since right before the pandemic and in the intervening three and a half years, we've heard so much about a perceived rise in homelessness and mental health issues that go with it and more people on the streets and electoral fortunes being changed as a result. But now, for the first time, we have quantitative data from this point-in-time homeless count. And you can see, in the city of Vancouver, it is a record high, more than 2,400, increasing at a rate even more than we saw in 2015, 16, 17 or so. Uh, in terms of the trends, uh, what we've seen is also an increase in the number of people, the percentage of people that say mental health is part of the reason and addictions that they are on the streets, as well as the percentage of people that say they have been homeless for more than a year. So certainly a lot of interesting policy information in this report based on all of the surveys done, and it'll be up now to politicians to look at all this information and decide the best ways to try and move forward to change those trend lines and to improve the situation for those thousands of homeless people. This count, of course, goes beyond Vancouver. It looks at our entire region. Is it a different story outside this city? Well, this is interesting, Dan, because we talk so much when it comes to homelessness about the city of Vancouver for a lot of fair reasons. But we're more than just a city. It's a metropolitan region. And when you look at metro-wide homeless numbers, that increase is going up faster than Vancouver. You can see it's been a near doubling of numbers between 2014 and 2023, going up 32% region-wide in the last three years. And you look at a broader number when you look at municipal municipalities as well individually in Surrey that we actually saw the highest increase by pure numbers of homeless people compared to 2020 even more than Vancouver you can see Richmond there was a near doubling over the last year so these are issues that all municipalities in the region are facing we're going to get numbers from the Fraser Valley and Greater Victoria later this year as well and it really shows just how this is a regional and provincial issue in this province a lot of uh, different groups trying their best to rectify it, but it's much more than just Vancouver. Justin McElroy, thanks very much. Thanks, Dan.